Welcome back to the starting gate, a Tuesday here on TVG, but not just any Tuesday. It's Fan Appreciation Day. I'm Todd Trump with Christina Blacker. So much racing action going on here in the States as it pertains to the Kentucky Derby, but one of the biggest races in the world, the richest race in the world, is the Dubai World Cup. California Chrome is back for another attempt. Last year, he was second in that race, and then a lot of controversy followed after that. But much more optimism for his connections as he prepares for this year's edition of the Dubai World Cup. And a man who will be on site to see it all is our colleague, Scott Hazelton, who joins us on this Tuesday. Hey, Scott. How are you guys doing? I, I must ask you, just from a, a personal point of view. How are you? I, yeah, you, yeah. You, you've been uh, going to Dubai for quite some time now. So have you become pretty proficient at packing? How does one plan to go on such a long trip? I, you just you, there's really no plan i mean i this will be my eighth year so eighth year um eighth year in a row i my first year was was a whirlwind i got a chance to see curlin you know race back there and i you know I, the connections that i had to the steve asby family and and i had a chance to see him run in the breeders cup classic and win that at monmouth park so i kind of felt that tie there and i just you know every year back i've been fortunate enough to be in, invited back and uh you know you just pack and and jump on that 16-hour plane ride, and and uh, you get ready, and you pay attention to the racing during the carnival. And uh, you know, lucky for us, there's plenty of U.S. representation every year. And you know, you go over there having covered these horses, so you have that big advantage in uh, you know knowing the connections, and, and even through the years, getting a chance to to know the the international some of the biggest international connections. So uh, it's good fun. I mean, I look forward to it every year because it is. Uh, one of the biggest days of racing that we have worldwide. There's no argument against that. Yeah, your enthusiasm is obvious uh, when I've talked to you off the set about the trip, and it's very apparent with the work you do over there, which is excellent, just like you do here on TVG. Christine and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, America is back. Uh, the American contingent is deep, but it really does start with California Chrome. You were there for his second-place finish in the Dubai World Cup last year. Wow, a lot has happened since then. Yeah, I didn't think there was a, yeah, a massive excuse. I mean, I think he just got outrun. And, and I will say this, this the fact that uh, he's going out there early, I think is going to be a huge advantage because going back to that World Cup night, uh, the two things that stood out to me were the two horses for Godolphin. They were bone dry in the paddock while the rest of these horses were, uh, they had a little bit of sweat on them. And it's hot. I mean, you're in the middle of the desert. And even if it's, still, it's late in the evening, it's still very warm. So I think the fact that he's going out there early to acclimate to the to the climate there in Dubai is going to be very big for him and you know right after the Dubai World Cup they immediately said that they were going to send him to Royal Ascot he was going to go to Ray Guest's barn and train at Newmarket and prepare for a run in the Royal Ascot and it caught a lot of people you know off guard uh, and then he had to skip the lock-in stakes which was the prep race for him at, at Royal Ascot uh, due to an injury and just things never seemed to, to truly come together they were going to try to push on and, and get to another race out there in the UK, but ends up scratching from the Prince of Wales' stakes, uh, the, the race that they were looking at uh, primarily. So that back to the drawing board there uh, with him and the fact that he'd been over there training with Ray Guest and had not been with Art Sherman, I think kind of rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. They then decide, you know what, we're going to go to Chicago. We're going to take on what tends to be an international cast every year in the grade one Arlington Million. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the way that he looked the second that he set foot off the plane, given everything that he'd gone through, uh, you know, training in Dubai, training in the U.K., scratching, and then shipping to Chicago. And, again, much like, not much like, exactly like uh, the attempts to get to the races in the U.K., he doesn't make the Arlington Million. So, you know, he has to skip that prestigious grade one event in the United States. They then, you know, end up sending him to Kentucky, and that's where – you take out Steve Coburn. He's out. He sells his uh, percentage to uh, the folks at Taylor Made. They are in. Perry Martin, still majority owner of this horse, and he, you know, laid up there in Kentucky. He came back to Art Sherman's barn, which only felt right uh, when coming back to Los Alamitos when he was out here in Southern California. All those, you know, months and, and years, for that matter, uh, running at his best and. He puts in that workout. He looks sensational in his workouts leading up to his first race as a five-year-old in the San Pasqual. Uh, it wasn't the biggest of field or the deepest of field, but that's just what we have out here on the West Coast. When you look at the, the older handicap division with the, the fluctuation, or, you know, the, the turnover in that uh, division out here on the West Coast, and he, he does what he was did what he was supposed to do. Does he have to step up after the San Pasqual 
uh, effort, absolutely, if he wants to compete on Dubai World Cup. But I will – Dubai World Cup night. I will say this. This race that he'll be running in uh, this coming Thursday is probably easier even than what he saw in the San Pasquale. So uh, that is going to work to his advantage. And they're doing the right thing by prepping this horse in this race versus waiting for round three of the Mock Tomb Challenge on Super Saturday. After the San Pasquale, he's been out there, he's shipped out there, and this is part of that, that acclimation process that has gone in with him, and his workouts have been great from all the reports that we've heard. Uh, Art Sherman's son, Alan Sherman, who's been with this horse every step of the way when he's stateside, uh, has said nothing but positive things. He's gotten a lot of media attention, as you would expect, from a horse that's coming back for another attempt in the Dubai World Cup, and he has that name recognition being a Kentucky Derby winner and uh, horse of the year. And, you know, here's here's a quick look at one of those workouts uh, with him at Maidan. So, I mean, it really feels like all systems go uh, for this horse, who at the age of five very well could be better uh, than he's ever been. And the fact that this race, the only wrench thrown into to this this process on Thursday perhaps is this inside post position draw. He, he draws post position number one. Uh, they said that was the undoing of him in the Pennsylvania Derby. But the reality, Todd and Christina, there's no Bayern in this race to worry about. That's who won the Pennsylvania Derby. You, you look at the ratings. They, they have their own ratings uh, over – it's much like the European ratings, but in Dubai they, they rate these horses. He's rated at a 121. I believe the next closest horse is rated a 105 uh, in this race on Thursday. You look at their form, they are not even close. The horse that's got the 105 rating that's trained by Doug Watson is not even close to what California Chrome is on paper. And just to lend perspective on, on – how this, you know, where these ratings come from or how they sort of stack up. Frosted was ra uh, rated at 120 for his run where he crushed the track record and actually better beat a better field in uh, round two of the Mock Tomb Challenge. And if you even want to go further back, Curlin, when he was prepping for the Dubai World Cup, because he did the same thing, he went out back there early. He ran in a race called the Jaguar Stakes. He was rated at a 128 in the Jaguar Stakes. And I, I really think that that field that Curl and Beat is very similar to what California Chrome will see on Thursday. These are a lot of older horses, a lot of war horses for uh, for family members over there, the Maktoum family, got Saeed Bin Soror, Doug Watson, some of the regulars, and horses that really don't seem to be up to par with that of California Chrome, especially because last Thursday they had a very similar race, and a lot of the, the better horses that are, are not of the grade one type, group one type, they race there. Uh, we saw a horse by the name of Faulkner win uh, for Doug Watson. So, I mean, if he doesn't win this race, I truly think that there's cause for concern given the the field and the company that he's going to be taking on. Yeah, and I just want to be clear. Uh, you're, you're not saying anything about Transgolf Electron Electromechanical Trophy because I know they're having an employee day at the races that day. Um, you're just talking about the field itself, not not the sponsor. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, okay. yes. <laughs> I mean, that's just it's one of those fields that uh, – seems as though it was put together for California Chrome. And, it, and it's good that they, you know, they, they pushed it to late in the card. Uh, there's a group race on, on the card as well that's before that. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's in very similar fashion, you know, referencing again 2008 with, uh, with Curlin. They know, they know what they need to do. They do by a racing club. They know exactly uh, what they need to do to attract these big-time horses and uh, – they're accommodating California Chrome, in my opinion. This is not speaking to anybody over there, but, but just looking at this at this group, um, he should be able to outbreak these horses coming out of the, the starting gate, get good early position, and uh, just go on with it. Because if Frosted was able to do what he was, was able to do, given Frosted doesn't have the same sort of early natural speed that California Chrome does, I, I think that this is game over as soon as they open the starting gate. Scott, thanks for taking uh, time to inform us on everything going over in Dubai. When do you actually uh, leave for uh, World Cup coverage? The Monday before the Dubai World Cup. I believe it's about uh, the 20th of March. So we've got a good month before we, uh, we head over that way and get things going.